Hi, I'm Liz. And I'm Charlie. And we are the Adventure Closet. And today we're at Indian Gardens Paleo site. That's not all we're doing today. Welcome to the Adventure Closet. I'm Liz and this is Charlie. We are two 80s and 90s kids that never lost their sense of wonder. We're all over the map, exploring wild and abandoned places, discovering rocks, geology, and history of different areas, all while living and traveling in our minivan Opal. I guess you can say our life is a mixtape of adventures. So hop in the van, hit the subscribe button, and let's go somewhere. Well, it's 9 a.m. We've packed up from our beautiful spot in the Tonto National Forest. The saguaro cactus are so amazing again. And the really cool thing about them is that um, they can live up to 150 years old. And at 75 to 100 years old is when they develop their first arm. So when you look out the window here as we're driving back out of the forest, you'll see so many of them have arms. So these are old trees or old cactuses. And it's just incredible. And some of them have so many arms. I mean, <laughs> and a lot of people have been like this is a heavy target shooting area and a lot of people have been shooting at them and like oh my gosh that like breaks my heart that I could not do that 150 years old to get those arms and you know be fully mature that's, there's a reason why people protect, protect them. Um, so if you're a target shooter, don't, don't shoot at the cactuses. I know I'm being a Karen right now, but serious. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> Somebody shooting at cactuses, turds. There's some. Another reason we love the saguaros so much is that they're each so unique. Everyone is different and they, they're like little characters with, you know, different arms going different ways, different expressions. You know, they have their own personalities. Yeah. Yeah. Their own personality. It's true. Yeah. And um, there is one cool thing in the Tonto National Forest that we really want to go see but we are on a budget, a very tight budget, but there's an arboretum here. And uh, it's like $17 per person to go. Oh, $15, which is kind of a lot. That's, you know, 30 bucks if we wanted to go, go look at plants, but I bet it's amazing because I've, we've seen some of the coolest plant life here. Um, and maybe you don't even have to go to the arboretum. <laughs> Just come here and look at the plant life. Go to the well, um, the Montezuma well. Uh, that, there was so much life there and there was so much education there. Um, they had um, signs at each tree and bush telling you what it was and what it was used for. And it's free and you don't even need the, um, the pass for the Montezuma well. Yeah, you, right, you don't have to pay anything, no America the Beautiful Pass, uh, yeah, completely free, and it was our favorite part of the area. Yeah, so far. So far, yeah, but we're not done yet. We're still in the Tonto National Forest, so who knows what's in store for today. What are those? Yeah. So much crazy plant life. It looks so soft. Actually, let's let's touch them. I guess they look so so soft. They're probably poisonous. Probably, and there's probably like oh, they feel like wool. Lots of dust coming off of them. Probably pollen. <laughs> They're beautiful. These have personality too. Wow. Cool. You see that guy's headband? 
know. Sweet. this has happened before and it was just cows but I am pretty dang sure we just saw a band of wild horses could be burros could be cows but if it's horses or burros and they're like in the middle of a patch of saguaro cactus I'm gonna try and not freak out to scare them but I'm going to be freaking out on the inside so I'm super excited we had to drive miles down to get an exit so that we could head back and then we got to find another exit so we could head down the other way because the highway is kind of weird it's a two-lane highway going that way and then you can branch over and then it's a two-lane highway going the other way um, whew, all right hopefully it's them I keep psyching myself out that they're cows but um, we parked kind of far away from where we saw them and Charlie's gonna fly the drone up so that we can kind of get a peek um, you know not get too close to scare them hopefully he won't scare them but uh, I'm really crossing my fingers because I've been wanting to see wild horses since we left our home in Washington State and that was a long time ago <laughs> and we've been through wild horse country and no luck so <sighs> okay let's get this drone up Hey, Drowny, let's see what you got. Okay, well, we're waiting. Let's go look at the sign up here. The Great Western Trail is a 3,000 mile shared use backcountry route from Canada to Mexico. Arizona's 800 mile portion of the trail uses back roads and traverses rugged and beautiful country with many points of discovery along the way. Hmm, cool. Beautiful wild horse. I'm never gonna see a wild horse. <laughs> it's a cow. There's cows over there. You know how many cows I've seen since we left Washington? More than I can count. More than you can count? Yeah, and you know how many cow patties I've seen? 
even more than we've seen cows. Well, maybe there's a horse among see them. Horses. Uh, there could be horses among them. Yeah. Hmm? I'm looking at the screen on the drone. Yep. There's three. <laughs> They're pretty cows. I mean, I love cows. They are actually pretty cows. Yeah. But they're definitely cows. They're the white-faced cows. All right. Whatever. Get some cool shots of some saguaros while you're out there. We're at Indian Gardens Paleo site. We saw the sign, we pulled over, and there's fossils here, and that's right up our alley, so. Well, it says there's fossils here, so I hope they're not lying. Yeah, they could be lying to us, but <laughs> I mean, why would they invest in such a cool sign? I don't know, let's find out. All right. So it looks like these are all the species of fossils you can find here. That's cool. Um, we'll poke around and see if we can find any surface finds. And if it gets interesting, we might go back to Opal and grab our tools. So Charlie said he just found something. We'll uh, have to see what it is. Hey, what you got here? I don't know, I haven't identified them yet, but that's what, those are fossils. Oh, that looks like. You have to oh, yeah. look at the little identification thing. This looks like it might have some stuff in it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And that was just uh, one small area looking on the ground. Okay. Oh, here's another. Right there. Like a shell. Oh, yeah. How neat is that? Here, let me get focused. Cool. Don't even need tools here. It's just on the ground. Yeah. One, uh, one good tip is just let everybody else do all the work <laughs> yeah. and come afterwards and just look on the ground for some small stuff. Yeah. I mean, you don't always need the big shell fossils or anything. I mean, it's cool just seeing this stuff. For sure. It's weird how we just happen upon things. Um, like, there's just cool stuff everywhere. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, just right off the road, like right off the highway here. You uh, would miss it if you were driving because uh, <laughs> you kind of come around a corner here and uh, if you aren't looking for it, it'll just, you'll just blow past it. Never know it was here. So sometimes it's good to have uh, your Google Maps up because it'll pop up like the names of certain things. And uh, a lot of times you don't have time to Google them. You just pull in and find fossils. <laughs> that's cool. I feel like that's the best part of uh, our trips is how spontaneous they are. Like nothing we do is really planned. Um, and a lot of times when we plan stuff, it just doesn't work out. So. It's best not to plan. <laughs> also, when we plan stuff, you're usually so focused on your plan that you just, you, you gloss over the small stuff and you, you miss out on a lot when you, when you plan things. Um, I think it's the best way to do this journey 
that we're doing. Uh, I don't know if it's called a journey or, or what. What do you call a trip with no destination? Because a trip is, is point A to point B. I guess it's a roaming around the, the country. <laughs> So you can tell there's definitely layers where people have been picking through um, more than others. I think it'll go up and just take a look up there. Very steep. Somebody's dug into a deep pocket here. Let's see what we can find in here. Looks like there might be something just in this rock I just pulled off. Hmm. All right, I'll check it out and I'll see what I can find. And then I'll get back to you because it's kind of hard to hold the camera on the on this steep hill and, uh, and look at the rocks too. So let me do a little digging and I'll get right back to you. I've got full shell. All right, Charlie's coming so I can show him my finds. Check that guy out. Oh, sweet. Here, grab him. Oh, what? Oh, you can see the, like, ribs in this one. The other half of it. Wow. Cool. Oh, is it broken? No. That's oh, you see, like, the imprint. impression. There's cool stuff here. Yeah. You trying to break my fossil? I was trying to get it out. Such a brute. So oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's sedimented rock. Yeah. I found another one. He was busting that rock open that he found. And look at that. Yeah, let me see if I can break another piece. He moves that out. around a little. You can, yeah. you can make out the lines in it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, let's see if I can break out another one real quick. All right. So I'm just literally just taking the rock and like taking, busting off the sedimentary layers. It's very brittle. Oh. Oh, there's another one right there. Yeah, that was the first one I found, but that's. that's We've been here one. like five minutes. Yeah, we just happened to, um, go across, or we were driving down the freeway, and I saw something that said paleo site on Google Maps, and just turned in here, and this is what it was. Uh, so, I love these finds that we just happen across. Yeah. I love you. I love you. You know, it's kind of funny, I just climbed up to the top of this thing because I always feel like if I get to the harder to get to spots, I'm going to find more things. Meanwhile, Charlie's in the main pit and he's finding tons of stuff and I'm finding nothing. <laughs> so I guess I better go back to the main pit. Okay, I did find a little something here. It's definitely a fossil inside here. I'm not sure what it is. And then I found... Drizzy. Nice sheet of it there. So I guess I'll keep looking up here. Oh my goodness. Look right there. Two right next to each other. All right, these are whole little like clams or I don't know what they are. So what I did is I found this wash 
while I was working my way down to get to Charlie. I don't know if you can tell the wash here. And I started looking around for shapes like shells. And sure enough, those two were right next to each other. In fact, oh, that's not one. But I think I'll hang out here for a little bit longer. I haven't even left the spot that I found the two. Look at this giant one and it's whole. Whoa. This is so fun. Oh my gosh. And I tried calling for Charlie, but he can't hear me. I hear him pounding away. But, uh, yeah. Oh, I think I see something. Wow. Let me get in focus here, sorry guys. Look at that. Ah, so cool. Look at this one, you guys. I found that. That's so cool. Look at all the things going on in this. I finally got Charlie over to the spot and <laughs> I looked just... down and found a whole plate. Wow. Fascinating. It's right here. That's crazy. This is an excellent spot. Yeah. To just happen <laughs> upon. That's crazy. So I just found this big one. I don't even know if I want to pull it out. But there's so much of it, like that piece. Uh, there's a piece right there. A uh, piece right, well, that's a stick. <laughs> but there's a piece right here. It's everywhere. And I'm sitting here breaking apart rocks and getting all dirty, and Liz is just picking them up off the ground. <laughs> I was just telling the camera that I like to get to the hard to get to spots because I think I'll find cooler stuff. Another plate. <laughs> and then I find this. Yeah, another plate. Oh my gosh. That is so neat. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna try and get this out without breaking it. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> I bet you if I take that dirt out though, it'll probably break. Yeah. But holy smokes, that's a big one. Cool. Nice little crystals in there. What in the world? That is way cool. Charlie just found this one. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's just dirt that sticks, but it's pretty tough. So I found my first crinoid and it's stuck to this other little creature. That's so cool. It's so tiny. Going in there. Oh yeah. Charlie just found a really good size crinoid for this area. I don't know how big crinoids get, but let me do a close up so you guys can see them too. Oh, yeah, they are everywhere. yeah, tell us if you see any. This is something right here. What is that? Weird. <laughs> well, that was fun. That was awesome. We got a bit. Yeah. 
<laughs> we are trying to not be greedy here, but there is so many fossils. And if you are in the area, you should come check this out completely free. So we're back on the road again, and um, we were kind of decompressing after all that excitement of finding the fossils. And I know Charlie kind of mentioned it when we were out there fossil hunting, but the we talk a lot about not making plans and we feel that that has been a key to a lot of our happiness in life and excitement in our journeys is just letting the road lead us and letting the wind blow us to where we need to go to find the fun because when you plan something it's not a surprise and surprises are fun yeah. especially when they're good surprises and uh you know, I I kind of challenge you, if you're a very regimented person that needs to know exactly what you're doing any time of day, challenge yourself. Go on a little road trip. You don't have to go as far as we have. Just leave your neighborhood on a Saturday morning and pick a direction and go. See what you find and then report back to us what you found. And if it sucked, it sucked. But I don't think it will. Just head where the forests are. Here we are driving through the forest of Arizona and it's making us think about how oftentimes like with perfect with different areas you have this kind of preconceived notion of what you're going to see um, you know when I thought I was gonna see a saguaro cactus I thought I was gonna see that staple cactus that has two arms but they're all so unique and Arizona has this diversity and the landscape like it has actual forest I I didn't know that and deserts and and it has deserts like it has everything but the ocean like Arizona is awesome and I never really regarded it as a place that I would fall in love with and Definitely, I love Arizona. It's beautiful. Found a nice campsite over here. I just heard an oh my gosh. You don't want to come here? <laughs> I'm coming. What'd you find? Another one of these guys. What? Oh my gosh! It's <laughs> a crack in the rock. This is beautiful. What the heck? Wow. Well, that's a nice camp spot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> gosh, do we stay awesome. or do we continue on? I don't know. Is there something cooler? Can you beat this? Yeah, it's still early in the day, so we don't really want to stop for camping yet, but maybe we should. I don't know. Yeah, this is crazy. But I kind of want to explore more at the same time. Yeah. Opal looks pretty here. Yep. It's perfect shade trees. Yeah. Huh. Well, as crazy as it sounds, we just weren't satisfied with that amazing spot. Even though Opal did look great, something told us to just keep wondering. As though our ravenous spirits were hungry gluttons for something more epic. We would not stop that evening until Mother Nature delivered us to the most spectacular home for the night. Our table was set, awaiting the grandest feast our eyes had 
ever devoured. Well, that was fun. That was so much fun. Bye now. Bye now.